Two races remain in the 2022 Sports Car Championship Canada, and both will be run here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. A tight championship battle could see a big shakeup in points as double points will be awarded in the final two races. Get ready for action this afternoon on TSN. Welcome to the 11th race of the 2022 Sports Car Championship Canada. We're at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park for the Sports Car Festival. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me is champion racer Kyle Marcelli. Todd Lewis is trackside. Kyle, it is always good to be back at the home for Canadian Motorsport. It certainly is, Dave. What a gorgeous day we've got. Uh, this is a 10-turn racetrack, 3.9 kilometers, a beauty of a road course, lots of elevation, high speed. We're so fortunate to have this in our backyard. And this year, the TCR and GT4 SCCC champions will receive a pretty interesting prize for their efforts here in 2022, a day at the Ace Climatic Wind Tunnel at the Ontario Tech University, which is just 20 minutes from here. Ontario Tech University in Oshawa, Ontario is home to one of North America's most advanced wind tunnels. The $100 million ACE Climatic Wind Tunnel is a commercial test facility available for any research project in both the public and private sectors. Some of the brightest young engineering minds work and study at the ACE facility. If you're a, an engineering student here and you're taking mechanical engineering, you do your fluid dynamics lab, you do it here in the tunnel. You do it with a race car. We have the Ferrari team in here and we work with the Ferrari team. No better way to learn Bernelli's equation than working with a race car in a wind tunnel. Industry leaders, researchers, and some of the sharpest students collaborate at the ACE facility to test and validate innovations with a focus on bringing them to market as rapidly as possible. The climatic wind tunnel has the ability to recreate extreme weather conditions, which helps the automotive industry with its challenges. The ACE wind tunnel also utilized by many in the motorsport community to find an aero advantage. The FEL Motorsport Group has joined forces with Ontario Tech University to help promote engineering in auto racing. The ACE Speed Lab has aerodynamic and thermal dynamic specialists who have access to wind speeds up to 270 kilometers an hour with the only yawing dynamometer in all of North America. We can do thermal dynamic dynamometer work and advanced force aerodynamic measurement as well as acoustics. So we've got the Swiss Army knife of tunnels. It's the Canadian wind tunnel tool in Canada's technology toolbox. Not only does this type of facility help with aero, but their ability to test aerothermal management. So you can optimize under hood temperatures by managing airflow through the radiator and into the engine compartment. And that sort of aerothermal testing also helps obtain data for overtaking situations and drafting. So it is a pretty neat deal having one of the top wind tunnels in the world. Some of the brightest minds in our own backyard just 20 minutes away from right here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Well, you can see the field rolling on the track right now as we get set for today's race. And we'll have a number of onboard shots to bring you today's action, including from the 86 of Quinnetrell, who will make a march up through the field. Now, the, right now, the driver's just trying to get some heat in their tires. And as they do, let's take a look at the Michelin starting lineup. Row number one has Jeremy Daniel in the TCR class. He'll start alongside Jean-Francois A.B., Charles Robay, and Ron Tomlinson make up row number two. And on row three, we got Jack Polito alongside the 84 of Richard Folk. Row number four is Tom Kwok alongside the nine of Zachary Vanier. And we look back to row number five, and that's where we find the 52 of Dean Baker. A couple TCR cars with Justin D. Benedetto in the four starting alongside. Row six is Quinn Attrell in the 86. His brother, Connor Attrell, in the 80 will start alongside. And row seven, the 38 of Vince Partap alongside the 66 of Gary Kwok. And that is the field, both GT4 and the TCR class, and they will start all mixed and mingled together here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, which always makes it interesting going into turn number one. Yeah, this is going to make things very exciting with, uh, with the TCR car on the pole position and the GT4s intermingled amongst the grid. 
And it is interesting to see some of the TCR class cars up towards the front. They just seem to be a little bit better here. Yeah, not unusual. Uh, obviously, the, the cars are very close in, in terms of lap time. This is a high-speed racing track. The GT4 category is uh, balanced from the SRO organization, separate from the TCR category, which is balanced from the WSC World Sports Corps organization. But it is going to make it a dynamite start as the field bunches up, except there's a gap there. Richard Boak in the 84 holding back just a little bit. He's supposed to start up alongside the Polito Ford, but he's getting up there now as they come off turn 10. Green flag waves, and we're underway. Yeah, Stewart's might take a look at that as a jump start. Yeah, he drove right down to the inside, so he comes through turn one with a full head of steam. Jeremy Daniel with a nice, comfortable lead as they exit turn one. Jack Polito looking to the inside in two. It's a great start from Polito in that Ford Mustang, formerly campaigned out of the Multimatic race shop. So that car won the championship in the GT4 class a year ago. Polito has been coming to grips with it all year. Started to make some gains the last time out at Calabogie, and now he is doing very, very well through practice and qualifying here at CTMP. Yeah, car looks strong right now. He's putting the pressure on for that second spot. You've got Robain there right behind as they work their way through 5A and B. How about second place, Jean-Francois A.V. in the 21 out of the TRC Motorsport shop. His teammate, Jeremy Daniel, out in front. But remember, after the street race in Toronto, that car was beaten and banged up. Crew went to work as now Polito moves around the outside. And there's the strength of the GT4. Yeah, we see that there as they work their way down the straightaway. The GT4 cars with more straight line speed. Jack's able to clear that TCR. Now they're coming into the twisty bits of 8, 9, 10, where you'll see those TCR cars much lighter, uh, uh, and you'll see the strength of those cars through that technical section. Charles Robay in that orange Mercedes AMG with Sodi Kart backing. He has the Technica mining number nine of Zachary Vanier. Vanier now up inside the top five, and he's doing exactly what he needs to do. He has to keep that orange car right in his windshield. Yep, Zach's had a fantastic season, very consistent, always up front, uh, you know, with two races to go here. Now it's just about playing it smart and bringing that championship win home. A couple out, he's filling his rearview mirror, though. Richard Boak now coming under pressure from Tomlinson in the 48. Remember, Tomlinson qualified in fourth spot, didn't get the greatest of starts. He slid back just a little bit, but now he's trying to muscle his way back up through the field. So it wouldn't surprise me to see the GT4 cars quickly work their way through the TCRs. Um, it's one thing to set a lap time when you're all by yourself and you've got clean air. It's another to be in traffic. And the TCRs are not going to be able to take advantage of the areas they're strong. They're going to run up on the back of those GT4 cars in the, in the tight stuff, whereas the GT4s are just easily going to drive by on the straightaway. So I think we'll pretty quickly here see the race uh, separate itself. Perfect example of that is Charles Robain. Proving you right as he went around the outside of the 21 of Jean-Francois Evie in turn number eight. And now the number nine of Zachary Vanier is tucked up in behind. But does the draft play a big role down the straightaway for these different types of cars? Like, do the TCR cars punch a bigger hole? Uh, not exactly. The GT4 has got a lot more horsepower. It's going to make its way past the TCR without, uh, without much concern. Um, you know, where the draft will be a benefit is, is, is within the categories. You know, one GT4 car to the next and one TCR car to the next. That draft up that Mario Andretti straightaway certainly will be worth something. Quick look at Tomlinson as he maneuvers through turn number four up towards Moss Corner, 5A and B. Polito leading Robay. There is your overall race leader, though, Jeremy Daniel in the Fix Auto number 10, and that is the lead he has built up in just a short period of time. It's almost five seconds already over the 22 of Jack Polito. Yeah, that's an impressive start, an impressive op opening few laps from Jeremy Daniel. He's He's got his head down. And that clean air really helps. Uh, you know, the rest of the, the field here is bunched up. And it's tough to put your best lap together when you're in traffic. But Jeremy Daniels got clean air, and he's making the most of it. What you don't want to do here 
this weekend, especially in race number 11, is make a big mistake. Double points up for grabs here in the Sports Car Championship Canada. We'll be back with more. Welcome back to Canadian Tire Motorsport Park in the FEL Sports Car Championship Canada presented by Michelin. We continue under green with Jeremy Daniel, your overall race leader, the TCR car, well out in front, but there are battles all over this track. This is what's great about this series is that while the leader may be well out in front, leading by over five seconds at this point, you look back deeper in the pack, and it is just a tight grouping of cars. Yeah, it certainly is, Dave. You know, this is just great for Canadian motorsport. I mean, it's it's been a while since we've had, you know, top-level sports car teams, drivers, cars, you know, competing across, uh, across Canada. Uh, I, I think we're going to see big things from the FEL Sports Car Championship with the years to come. Yeah, and you talk about years to come. Let's talk about next year. Uh, it's already been announced that the TCA class will join. So there'll be three classes racing on the track at the same time. That's another internationally homologated class. It certainly is, and it's going to provide just another step in the system, uh, a great opportunity for, for carters uh, looking to transition into professional motorsport. You know, you've got options uh, from the Honda Civic available through HPD, the Elantra N through Brian Herta Autosport, the Mini, the Subaru BR, uh, BRZ, the list goes on, and, and a starting price of just $55,000. So great things to come here in the FEL Sports Car Championship. Yeah, for drivers not wanting to run in maybe the Nissan Sentra Cup anymore, which is another class racing currently in Canada, this is another opportunity to move up to get take that next level of professionalism as well here in the Sports Car Championship Canada. You know, many of these cars we've touched on already, but, you know, these are globally homologated race cars. You know, uh, you can you can run this same GT4 car just about anywhere in the world, this same TCR car just about anywhere in the world. So, you know, drivers and teams, they're they're developing their skill, they're, they're, they're learning the, uh, the, the setups, the engineering. Um, you know, this, this could just be another step in their career, and maybe they look to go down to the U.S. and run the IMSA Mission Pilot Challenge. You know, there's, there's options for teams and drivers. You can see Vanier in the McLaren just ahead of the TCR of Bolt in the Blanchette Motorsports entry. There is your race leader, though, continues out in front. 5.6 seconds is the gap between top spot and second spot. So a TCR car leads GT4 currently in second in the 22 of Jack Polito. But look at Jeremy Daniel go to work. Look at how calm and collected he is. Right on board through turn 10, onto the front straightaway. This car has just been so, so good all weekend long, and really all season long. We talked about the points battles that are up for grab, but uh, Jeremy Daniel comes into this one, the leader in the points in the TCR division. So realistically, he just has to keep his nose clean and he'll go home the champion. Yeah, this will just be an exclamation point on what's been a fantastic season for Jeremy Daniel. At this point, though, we maybe shouldn't start counting out the 22 of Jack Polito because if you look at the last lap time and the gap, it is starting to get just a little bit smaller. 5.1 seconds that last time by, and we still have over 31 minutes left in this timed race. And Jack working his way through 5A and B hard on the brakes. You see the splitter scraping across the ground. The Polito Racing guys definitely got that car hooked up this weekend. Bart and the team, uh, great group of guys, small team, very family oriented, been together a long time. Um, you know, we should touch on Jack. He's, uh, you know, he's a Canadian snowcross champion. Um, you know, he's cut his teeth with Brian Graham Racing in the F1600 series, and now he's looking to make that transition into sports cars and, and doing a great job here today. And Polito Ford Lincoln, no strangers to motorsports. They've got uh, quite a field of historic Fords in their back garage as well that they take out for historic races as well. Now we're on board with 
Charles Robain and that Mercedes AMG. What a comfortable race car to drive. I've, I've had the privilege of spending some time in this car and it's, it's one of the easiest uh, GT4 cars out there to drive. Uh, just very uh, uh, driver friendly. Um, you know, it doesn't surprise you in any way. It, it, it actually re uh, rewards um, a, a smooth style, a, a less aggressive style. Just if you're patient and calm, that's what the Mercedes likes. And Charles has clearly figured that out and done a fantastic job with it today. Yeah, he's had a great 2022 season as well. He's been sort of in a dogfight all season long with Zachary Vanier, the 56 and the 9, usually covered by a blanket every single stop of the way. And Robay has come out in front in that dog fight on several different occasions as we ride on board the 21 of JFEV. You see the Mercedes just inch away. Surprisingly, most of it was done on the low end. He, he gapped the 21, maybe five, six cars down low and maybe only two or three down the straightaway. So clearly the torque is what's uh, 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 the, the strength of the GT4 over the TCR. Difference in horsepower is about 100 between the GT4s and the TCRs. GT4 is making about 500 horsepower. The TCR is about 400, but completely different engine packages. Uh, obviously, the TCRs are front wheel drive, so a little bit more difficult to drive. Yeah, and I want to say about about two to three hundred diff, uh, two to three hundred kilograms different in weight to the TCR being a lot lighter, easier on the tires as we see that. The 21, JF have they make a move on Robain into turn two. Respect from both drivers. Got a lot of space in between, but there you saw, as he get into the tighter, twistier bits, the 21 able to use momentum and make the pass underneath the 56 of Charles Robain. But we talked about how much racing is left, so that's a smart move. Let him go right now, see how much he abuses those Michelin tires and maybe you'll get it back a little bit later on in this race. Yeah, the TCRs are certainly using the front tires more than the GT4 cars would. They're asking a lot. They're braking, they're accelerating, they're turning all with the front Michelin rubber. So uh, expect to see the TCRs fall off later in the race compared to the GT4 category. We haven't really talked a little bit about the temperature and the heat today as Tomlinson goes to the outside, the 48 and the 84 and Boak just drove it in a ton on the inside of turn number eight, not willing to give up an inch, so he'll hang on to that spot as Tomlinson had a very, very good run on the outside in what could have been a, a legitimate passing opportunity. Yeah, earlier you, you we touched on the draft and we just saw a good example of that as the 48 got alongside, but we'll be back right after this. And welcome back to the Labor Day Sports Car Festival here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park for the Sports Car Championship Canada. Still is Jeremy Daniel out in front of the field. His teammate has now settled into third spot in the TRC Motorsport Audi, but there is second place, the 22 of Jack Polito. But what's interesting here is we have a TCR car in the lead. We have a GT4 car sitting in second, and we have a TCR car sitting in third. As we are on board with the 22, he's Jack Polito. He's flat out over turn four. Big commitment corner. That, that is really tough to convince yourself that the car is going to work through turn number four, isn't it? Yeah, it, it takes a few times uh, uh, with a lift uh, before before I certainly built the confidence to do it flat out. And then once you get it done the first time, then OK, it, it, you know, it's easy to do the second time until the tires go away and then it gets more <laughs> difficult. <laughs> and it'll surprise you in a hurry. Daniel, now you can see 8.5 seconds, almost 8.6 over his teammate. The difference for the lead in the TCR division, both Tomlinson and Baker round out the top five, and there's the intervals in GT4. Polito, Robain, and Vanier, your top three there. Yeah, Daniel is just putting on a clinic today. That new 22 Audi RS3 LMS TCR car, he's got it hooked up uh, at a TRC Motorsport and the 21 JF Heve also had a TRC Motorsport running in second. 
And what's interesting, you look at the lap times and it, and it goes back and forth. That last time by, Daniel was about four tenths of a second quicker than Polito. Polito was quicker the lap previous. So it's still around five seconds. Yeah, now 5.2 seconds is the difference between these top two drivers, but it, it sure is maintaining. Like Daniel was able to, to gap really early on and get that gap up to about four seconds in the early going. And now Polito seems to have found his stride sitting in second spot. Yeah, as we touched on earlier, you know, there is something about being in clean air. No distraction in front, no distraction behind. Just, you know, put your head down, execute the best you can, get the most out of the equipment. And, you know, Jeremy Daniel had that right from the get-go. He had, he had clean air. Jack had to work its way through a little bit of uh, TCR traffic, but uh, he's found a hole now. And as you said, they're, they're exchanging quick laps at this point. You saw that big grouping of cars, mostly TCR cars, following just in behind, led by Richard Boak, Tomlinson. Baker is in there, both Quacks, Tom and Gary Quack in the 55 and 66, and Di Benedetto, who actually visited Victory Lane at one of our stops at Calabogie in the four car, is hanging on to the tail end of that snake, that line of TCR cars as they continue to try and close the gap up to A, your overall race leader, and B, second place, third place there as it starts to stretch out a little bit at the front of this field. What a gorgeous day here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. You know, often lap records are set at this time of year. Cool temperatures, good grip in the racetrack. We're just seeing fantastic pace from both GT4 and TCR cars here today. It is a warm one here today, though. And how much does overall temperature, both on track and, and ambient air, how much does that affect these cars as far as brakes and tires go? It's certainly going to affect lap time. I mean, certainly from an engine uh, power standpoint and, and tire performance standpoint, brakes, not so much. Certainly at this racetrack, there's not a lot of heavy braking. Um, but, uh, you know, as you get closer to the fall and temperatures start to drop, um, the cool temperatures, you know, you're making more, more power and, and producing better lap times. There you see once again Tomlinson moving to the outside of that Blanchette Motorsports Audi, but again it is Boke on the inside who outmuscles the fellow Audi. And he'll hang on to that third spot in class. Tomlinson sitting in fourth as one of the drivers nips the grass on the exit of turn number 10. Now Boak working through turn number one. It seems Tomlinson is best getting off of turn five and heading down the straightaway. That's where he's been closest so far. As we ride on board, you see the cars lean and using every bit of rubber, every bit of racetrack. Now working their way into turn three. Nice wide approach on the entry. It's a late apex corner. You want to stay off that apex curb, though. It's quite aggressive. Now coming into turn four. Again, TCRs are almost flat out, if not flat out, through four. You watch the hands moving on Zachary Vanier in the McLaren. Prepared out of the FAF Motorsport shop as Vanier heads down the straightaway. Have a listen. What's interesting about that car is the engine is in the back, so you can hear a lot of the rattles and squeaks. And I, I think as a driver, that would affect you until you got used to it, wouldn't it? Yeah, and it's a quiet car too, turbocharged. Um, now we see the 84 to the inside of, no, that's a defensive move. Sorry, that's Boak staying on the inside. Tomlinson still trying the outside line. Once again, these two are having a whale of a fight for third in class in the TCR class. Boak has it, and Tomlinson really wants it. Remember, Tomlinson out qualified the 84 of Boak, so might have a little bit more speed in that car, but catching is one thing, passing is a completely different story. You can see the back end of that 84 just a little bit free as they work their way through turn one. That's what you want in a TCR car. Loose is fast. Talking about the TCR class, we should say a big hello to Bob Attrell, who is here cheering on his boys, Connor and Quinn. Of course, Bob injured in that crash at Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières. His season is done, but he's healing up well. He's in good spirits and uh, always has a smile on his face. So it's good to see Bob in the paddock this weekend. Yeah, lap times are close at 25-0 for Richard Boak, up leading that train at 25-0 for the 21 of Tomlinson, sorry, the 48 of Tomlinson. 
Then we got a, a string of 24 nines, the three cars behind that. So this is getting close. This is getting tight. You can see Vanier starting to open up a bit of a cushion now over the 84 of Oak as he runs that defensive line not blocking at this point just running a defensive line is Boak now look at Tomlinson he tried to go to the inside no room there back swinging to the outside in turn number eight yeah you got to wonder if these cars are just set up very differently obviously both Audi TCRs um, but you, you, the, the, we see the 48 with a ton of straight line speed the draft is certainly working but I gotta think he's trimmed out and that's why Boak's able to get away from a bit in the twisty stuff but the 48 slippery in a straight line Hitting the halfway mark as you saw the cross flags as we passed the flag stand on the front straightaway. Boak not looking at much except his rear view mirror and finding out where that 48 is going to try and make a move next. You see the two Honda Civics tailing on there. Great run by the 52 of Dean Baker too. We haven't really talked much about that blue car sitting 30 in that line. And this has to be one of his best runs so far in 2022. Yeah, certainly is. Uh, you know, Dean's been at it a while. Uh, he had some tough luck earlier in the season, but great to see him up front here. You know, I have fond memories racing against Dean when I started in Formula 1600. He was a guy that you could run side by side with through turn eight in an open wheel 1600 car. Great race craft. Uh, respectful driving, good uh, good to see him having a good go today. And this is his home track. He's from nearby Bowmanville, so about 10 minutes down the road. It's not a long haul for Dean Baker, but he's putting on a good show here for his hometown fans as we watch out the front window of the race leader, overall race leader, the 10 of Jeremy Daniel continues to pace things here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Welcome back to the FEL Sports Car Championship Canada presented by Michelin. Jeremy Daniel continues out in front. This is second place. We're riding on board in second place in GT4, I should say. Charles Robay in the 56. Love this section of the racetrack, probably my favorite, 8, 9, 10. You got really high speed, uh, big commitment on the entry to turn eight, and then you kind of woe it down through nine and woe it down a little more through 10. And then you'll wind back up to start the lap over again at it going into turn one, a great portion of the racetrack. Is turn one a flat out corner? It depends on the car. I've driven many prototypes where turn one is flat out. In the GT4 category, uh, you're going to have a little bit of a lift just to get the nose to set, put a little weight on the front axle, and then back to throttle by the apex, but just a small lift. Just over 15 minutes left to go in this timed race, and Polito has dropped back just a little bit for the overall race lead. As you can see, Charles Robain take a quick look at his mirror. He doesn't have anybody back there too close. He does have the number nine of Zachary Vanier, but again, Vanier with a big picture race here today. Double points up for grabs. All he needs to do is keep that 56 right where it is. We got and the pits. Yeah. The 86, Quinnetrell in pit lane. This is unexpected. Yeah, the Hyundai Racing Canada Entry headed for his pit stall and his brother Connor Attrell unable to make the start. And you can see a quick wave of the hand. And it looks like the crew telling him to shut it down. They may be done. Oh, that's a tough go. Not what you want with 14 minutes to go around 11. Another race tomorrow. We'll see if they get that car back out on track. So there is third overall in the GT4 class. Your points leader coming into this race. Zachary Vanier as he tries to close on the 56 of Charles Robain, but Robain's really had his number so far this weekend. And let's head down pick side. Todd is standing by with an update on the driver, the 86. Todd? Unfortunately, the infection has spread, guys. This is pretty much the same power steering issue for Quinn Attrell that his brother Connor Attrell has had for the last couple of days. And Quinn is out of the car, and he is going to be finished for the afternoon. 
dejected for sure as he makes the walk back to his paddock area. But that is unfortunate because both Connor and Quinn had really learned a lot here in 2022 and we're starting to make great gains. Yeah, as we look back to this fight here, we've got Richard Boak and Tomlinson still nose to tail as they work their way out of, uh, out of turn five. Up the back straightaway, Tomlinson looking to the left side again. Just needs to get up there just a little bit more over the hump and under the Canadian Tire Bridge. This time he might have position. He can squeeze the 84 down. He doesn't though, as both hangs on one more time. Yeah, I think the 48 needs to take a step back, take a breather, and maybe maybe try something different. Boke's kind of got his number figured out right now as he makes that same move, you know, three times in a row into turn eight unsuccessfully. He does seem to have the pace though. Uh, just see if, you know, we'll have to see if he can find a different spot on the racetrack to make that pass happen. Think about it though, when the 48 backs out in turn number eight to, to resume his normal racing line, look at how quickly the 52 of Dean Baker closes up. Now he's right on the back bumper of Tomlinson. Yeah, this is this is great racing. And you know, some of the best sports car racing you're gonna see in Canada happening right here in front of us. Um, you know, this is an opportunity where these drivers can just sort of take a second. They really need to think. This becomes a, a bit of a mental game at the same time. They're of course asking everything they can out of these race cars, but it's a chess match, and they got to think, you know, where am I strong? Where am I weak? How am I going to make this pass happen? Folks, smooth on the throttle on the exit of five down this straightaway, which is actually a series of kinks because you go from turn five, there's a turn six, there's a small kink as a seven, and then the next major corner is turn eight at the end of the straightaway. Another thing to consider when you're tucked up the bumper like that, it's going to be, uh, it's just creating a little bit more work. You're not getting the airflow. You're not getting the downforce on the car. You know, cockpit temperatures are going to climb. It's, uh, uh, it makes it makes life a little bit more difficult. So the 48's got to look for some clean air, get the nose, you know, tucked down a little bit if he can at the apex of the corner, put a little more downforce on the car. And uh, like I said, he does seem to have the pace, but just unable to get by so far see what happens in the next 11 minutes. You talk about the downforce, but the splitter here on these types of cars does make a big difference, especially when it's a front wheel drive car. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's why we're seeing the lap times we are. You know, Mossport is a is a fast racetrack. It's a high downforce racetrack. These TCRs are light and they've got quite the aerodynamic body kits on them. Um, you know, downforce is, is certainly quite, uh, quite a factor. So the difference at the front, a TCR car, front wheel drive, four cylinder, turbocharged, making about 400 horsepower, is your overall race leader at this present moment. Jeremy Daniel is that driver at the top of the sheets right now. It is Jack Polito in a GT4 car giving chase in second spot, but he's almost seven seconds back of the Fix Auto Audi. Yeah, the TRC Motorsport Camp has that car hooked up. Jeremy Daniels just out, sailing out front. There you can see, now it's under seven, or yeah, still under seven seconds, 6.9 seconds, the gap, the 21 of JF AV. So really the TRC Motorsport crew have done their job here this weekend. Daniel turning track record times in qualifying earlier on this weekend, and he has maintained the pace here in race number 11, where he has gone untouched so far, since the drop of the green, the 10 has been the class of the field. Welcome back to the Sports Car Festival here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. I'm Dave Bradley, joined in the booth by Kyle Marcelli. John Lewis is trackside, and this is a battle really for the thick of third in TCR on back, and it is so tight. One mistake, and positions will change. Yeah, Richard Boak is in the 84 has been hanging on to that third spot since pretty much the drop of the green flag, but got quite the field of TCR cars stacked up behind him right now as the 48's trying to find his way by. 
love the sound of those turbocharged four-cylinder engines at song as they ease their way through turn four hard on the brakes in turn five a little hop of the curve for a lot of these cars and then head back down the andretti straightaway you see the 48 tucked in trying to get a bit of that draft sitting a little further back than previous laps. You wonder if he's trying to cool the tires, maybe having a reset, thinking how he's going to make this happen. Do you wait as a driver for the driver in front of you to get a little complacent, thinking they have you covered, and then possibly try and close the gap very quickly? You know, Dave, that's one strategy. Um, in a perfect scenario, when you when you catch that car, you want to make the pass happen right away. You want him to be, you know, the, the, you, you don't want him to expect it. Uh, you know, sooner or later, that leading car is going to figure out where you're strong and just take away the line from you, and you're never going to get by. Uh, you know, so then it's okay. Strategy number two, I'm going to just try to put the pressure on and force him into a mistake, then find my way past. No mistakes yet from Richard Volk, but the 10 of Jeremy Daniel and look at the lap times now a 125 0 to a 124 2 for Jack Polito so the 22 is really starting to chip into that lead remember not too long ago we were talking about seven seconds the gap it's now five and a half seconds the last time they crossed the stripe yeah, we expected the front Michelin tires to fall off some on the TCR car certainly more than the GT4s but not this late. He's he's made uh, he's made the most of that Michelin rubber up to this point. Just six and a half minutes remaining. I thought we would have seen them fall off a little sooner. Obviously, that Audi TCR is working well. And yeah, we'll see how much now can Polito edge into that lead. So there goes Daniel crossing the stripe. Here comes Polito out of turn number ten. He'll cross the stripe 5.2 seconds. So another three tenths of a second. You're going to need a little bit more than that with six minutes left. Would the crew now be in his ear telling him, you're catching him, it's time to push just a little bit more, or do you not want to upset the apple cart and just let him continue to hit his marks? You know, there's no pressure for Jack. Um, I had the privilege of working with him and his team back at Calabogie Motorsports Park. And, uh, you know, what a great young man, uh, an aspiring race car driver, but he's here to learn. He's here to, uh, to, to gain as much experience as possible. And, and the team's not putting too much pressure on him, and, and nor is he putting pressure on himself. That's one thing I like about Jack. Uh, so, you know, a great drive here today. Certainly a talented race car driver, and I expect to see big things from him in the future. And he'll see now, looking out the front windshield of that Ford Mustang, he'll be able to see the 10 car in places he hadn't been able to see Jeremy Daniel in the past few laps. So he'll know that he's catching him on the track. So maybe he'll start pushing just a little bit more. On board third place overall, that's JF Avey. As he works his way through eight and nine. He's having a great run here today as well. Started on the outside of the front row, settled into third in the early going and has been there nearly every step of the way. Look at that though, the difference at the line. Four seconds now, 4.1 seconds. Polito has really set sail. Yeah, that's a big chunk that last lap over a second. You know, I, I want to touch on the 56 of Charles Robain. You know, he, he's had a great season thus far. Um, you know, he and Zach Vanier going back and forth. For the most part, Vanier's got the best of them, but not today. Uh, you know, the, the, the 56, Charles, he's, he's just been on rails today, uh, and it's got to feel good to be leading that championship uh, uh, leader, McLaren. Absolutely. Keep him in the rearview mirror. That's what Charles Robain wants to do. He tries to maximize points, but he'll have to catch second place overall, the 22 of Jack Polito. As there he can see, the back bumper of the 10 as they head down the Andretti straightaway. Elon Polito holds it into turn number eight. And the nose doesn't really drop, so he's not breaking that much. Yeah, he's really chunking away at that, at that gap. Jeez. Yeah, that's closing up big time now into 10, and Polito is right there. So as the 10 car crosses the stripe, let's check lap times now, 2.2 seconds. So he is right there, three minutes left to go in this timed race. So he needed to start taking chunks, and he is doing just that. He's got the pickaxe out, 
and he's taken away those chunks. Our way into turn three again that wide line late apex back to throttle early tracking out wide you want to use every inch of the pavement in turn three you see the 10 up ahead Jack is not lifting he is full steam he wants to win this race oh a big wiggle through turn four you see the rear of that Mustang get away from him and he had to catch up with it huge and put him offline into turn number five so that's cost him some precious tenths of a second on this lap, he managed to hang on to it, though, but that is definitely a moment for the driver of the 22 as he catches his breath down this straightaway. Good opportunity down the straightaway for Jack Polito, but when we return, we'll take it to the end here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. At one point, the gap at the front of this field was over seven seconds. It's far from that right now as the 22 of Jack Polito has really been closing on your overall race leader, the 10 of Jeremy Daniel. Yeah, just one and a half seconds with a little over a minute remaining, maybe two laps more. This is cool to see, you know, Jack's leading in GT4, but second overall, he could just put it on cruise control and win in class, but no, he is head down, pedal to the metal. He wants to go for the win overall. Good news for him, too. He doesn't have that pressure from behind. Charles Robain is about 10 seconds further back and a quick little blip on the throttle from the driver of the 22. Yeah, you see a bit, bit more of a lift through turn four on, on these closing laps compared to earlier in the race. We talked about the tires potentially starting to get a little bit too hot for Jeremy Daniel, but that could be the case for the 22 of Polito as well at this stage in the race. Oh, absolutely. Tires are going away no matter what car you're in. It's just, uh, you know, how a matter of how much. Yeah, we're going to see the white flag this time. And Daniel will be the one to see it first. Polito closes yet again. Turn number eight. That car is working just a little bit better in the final stages of race number 11 for the FEL Sports Car Championship Canada presented by Michelin. The white flag is out. This is good stuff. And, you know, let's not forget about the 21 of JFFA right there in the distance. He's obviously got great pace late in the race as well. Yeah, he's closed the gap now. 4.6 seconds to the overall race leader. But definitely Daniel will be watching his rearview mirror now through turn two. Turn number three will present a passing opportunity. Now, this potentially could be the first time that the TCR, the 10 of Daniel, wins overall. So you wonder what's going through his mind. Is he, is he going to want to play it safe here and let the GT4 through, or is he going for the win as well? He can make it difficult by making that car as wide as possible as he touches the brake a little bit in turn number four. Polito will drive up to his bumper in turn five. Polito's close. I got to think the extra horsepower of the GT4 is going to find its way past. Let's see what happens up the Mario Andretti straightaway. Clean exit on five, that's what Polito needed as he tucks in behind the Audi RS3 of Jeremy Daniel. Will that extra horsepower from the GT4 pay off here as they head to turn number eight? Not quite, he couldn't quite get there, could Polito, but through nine and into 10 and it is still Jeremy Daniel, he's led since the drop of the green, and he'll lead them off of turn number 10. Race winner in race number 11, Jeremy Daniel, and a TCR car wins the overall for the first time. Polito, four tenths of a second back in second. Wow, what a race here in the FEL Sports Car Championship. Can let's not forget about this battle here. Boke, as he works his way through 10, the 48 of Tomlinson still tucked up under the bumper. They cross the stripe. Well, he watched the bumper long enough to Tomlinson. Both held him off the entire race distance. Baker right there as well. But what a race for that driver, the 10 of Daniel, as he sticks his hand out the window, collecting congratulations from this crowd here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. But when we return, we will chat with your race winner in victory lane.
Welcome back to Victory Lane here in the Sports Car Championship Canada presented by Michelin. Jeremy Daniel unbuckles and steps out of that Audi RS3. What a dominating drive here today. Yeah, what a day for the number 10. That's more than just a win. That is a big win here at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. Let's take a look at your overall results. You see Charles Robain coming home second in class, fourth overall. Vanier just in behind. And of course, Quinnetrell with those issues in the 86 will come home in 13th. Let's head down to Victory Lane where Todd's standing by. The smile is unmistakable from Jeremy Daniel, who comes into Victory Circle here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. You seem for most of this race to be on cruise control out front. Oh yeah, it was, uh, I uh, created a, quite a gap at the first lap and I tried to maintain that gap. Uh, uh, my, my engineer was uh, giving me the, the good pace. I think it was the, the right pace for the car. Although by the end of the race, I was uh, starting to lose brake a lot. Uh, so uh, I, I slowed down just enough to uh, make sure I keep that first place. Congratulations, a big win here, and that certainly helps with double points. Oh yeah, of course. I mean, uh, the the goal was to uh, was to be conservative and uh, aim for championship points, and there's no better way. I think that's the best points I can get today. <laughs> Jeremy Daniel, your winner in TCR here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. And when you win, the points take care of themselves. Yeah, sure do. Interesting to hear he was struggling with brakes, unusual for a TCR at CTMP. Your point standings, though, however, uh, the 10 of Jeremy Daniel, followed by the 21, JF Heve, third, Ron Tomlinson in the 48. And now 26, the gap at the front with one race remaining. Todd? Jack Polito is the GT4 class winner here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. What a drive today. Yeah, it was quite a drive. It was my second time in the car, so I had a blast, that's for sure. And you really made a big push at the end to try to take the overall victory. What was your strategy there? Well, I knew the TCR cars, their tires fade a lot harder than ours because they use a lot more tire than us. So I was planning on just one more lap, but it was whatever. I wasn't going to push anything that didn't need to happen because I already won this class. So I'm pretty happy with that. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. You talked about it, not putting pressure on himself was important for Jack Polito here today. But there you can see the point standings, 14. Zachary Vanier has over Charles Robain. But it's still anybody's championship with one more round remaining. Let's not forget last two rounds, 11 and 12, work double points. Yeah, so if, if Vanier finishes third and Robain wins, then we'll have a different leader in the championship. But the winner overall today and the winner in class in the TCR division is Jeremy Daniel as he steps to the top step of the podium. But what a race. He got out in front and he led by quite a margin as the others battled deeper in the field. We were kept on our toes the entire time. We had an intense battle in TCR for that third spot between the, the Richard Boak and Ron Tomlinson. And there you see Zachary Vanier keeping his nose clean. Points racing, looking at the overall picture here in round number 11 as J.F. Avey trying to match the pace of his teammate out in front. But Jack Polito put on a late charge coming up just so short, still winning in the GT4 class as he takes his step on the top of the podium. So a big congratulations to the winners here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. One more round remains here in 2022.